Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Artillery Genius, which is the smaller brother of the Sidewinder. So this is Artillery's latest offering. And I'm really excited about this machine because the Sidewinder, I thought was an excellent all-arounder of what it offered and all the features that it came with. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. <music> All right, so this is the box that the Genius comes in, and it's actually quite a large box. It's definitely not small by any means. So on the box, we do have some branding here and saying what it is, and there are straps all around the box to help it protect it during shipping. All right, so let's go ahead and cut these off. We got some artillery tape. Let's go ahead and cut that. All right. Nice thick cardboard. So on the top we have a nice foam pad and this is what we're greeted with. So it looks like we have a manual here. It does say Genius Installation Manual. Very nice color pictures. And it looks like it has multiple languages. So we got seven languages in this manual. Very nice. We got a little read me first. And these are just warnings of what could happen when you use a 3D printer. And so we have a quality control little slip here. I guess that they tested it, make sure everything works. All right, so here on the top, we can see we have the main upper portion, the gantry. And by the way, this printer is actually very beginner friendly because there's not much assembling to do. All right, so we do have a US power cord, the all metal spool holder bracket. And we also have a little toolkit here in a pouch, looks like. So we got hardware with some Allen wrenches. Looks like an extra ribbon cable. I guess just in case we need one. A one gig USB drive, a cable to connect from your printer to your computer, a really nice 10 and eight millimeter open wrench. And the last baggie here looks like we have some extra wheels, an extra nozzle 0.4, an LED little module for lighting, probably an extra one, some tubing and a couple zip ties. And that's everything for the pouch here. All right, so there's a lot of foam in here, guys. I mean, there's just foam everywhere in here and it's all very thick looks like. So let's go ahead and get this upper part out. And as you guys can see, it's already pre-built and we have two drivers for the Z axis. Even though this printer has a smaller format, it still keeps the dual drives, which is awesome. And the other awesome part is they're coupled here on the top with this belt between two sprockets. So that's a really nice bulletproof way of keeping your Z axis very stable as it goes up and down. We're gonna take a closer look at all the features of this in a bit once we get it all out. So as you guys can see, we have lots of foam. There's another foam piece here. So they really put the effort in keeping this thing safe during shipment. And so the only other piece we have left looks like is the base. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull it out. All right, so it just comes right up. So it looks like we do have like this little piece of paper taped on top of the bed. And the reason for that is because they don't want you to get this dirty or not even that. You don't want to scratch up this ultra base, which is a really unique technology of how the prints stick and then pop off as they cool. So as you can see, guys, that is everything for the box. And I'm still blown away of how much thick foam they have in here. So a huge thumbs up for packing the printer exceptionally well. 
So right off the bat, I'm quite impressed with how everything is set up and how minimalistic it is. So we have the base, the upper gantry, and then we just have a few pieces here. So as you can see, this is quite friendly and should be quite simple to assemble and get going. And I really like it when companies make it as easy as possible for you, the user, to have a painless experience and in installation and get set up and going really quick out of the box. So in our manual here, you guys can see how many parts we should be having. Very simple. And then we have these nice pictured step-by-step -step directions of how to put it together. So step one is quite simple. It's aligning the gantry to the base and then affixing it with these four M540 bolts. But before we do any kind of assembly, what I want to do is flip this guy around here, the base. And here we can see the bottom. We have a large fan here, some cooling openings, nice squishy rubber feet. A label here that says that if you open this, your warranty will be void. But I'm going to go ahead and open it so we can see what kind of, you know, board it has and how everything is organized inside. So once the little bolts are out and there's only six of them, this lid should just come off. Now you definitely don't want to take this off unless, you know, you're out of warranty or whatever. Or if you just absolutely have to get in here. But you will void your warranty, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to cut this label here. So we should be able to just peel this back. And we do have a fan that's kind of has a short wire. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it here, get the bottom plate out of the way. We can see this really nice large fan connected to the bottom of the plate, the nice shroud on the other end. And so this is what it looks like underneath. So everything looks very well organized. So starting in this corner, we have the AC plug that's fused here with an on and off switch. Then we have our power supply, which is not large at all. And I can't really tell the wattage or the brand because it's hiding under there. But the cool part is, is that you don't need a large power supply for this printer because we have an AC heated bed. And what that means is, is that the mains here from the plug, the same power is being used to heat the bed. I'm really happy that they're doing that with this printer. So as you can see, the cable management is great here. Everything is very nicely organized and all of the connectors looks like they're hot glued or something. Here we have the display board and it does have an arm processor. And here we have the main board here. And as you guys can see, all of our stepper drivers here are heat synced and they're also removable. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of stepper drivers are in here, but I'm pretty sure they're the quiet ones that make the motors really silent. But we'll find out once we power this thing on. So yeah, the board is a maker base. MKS Gen L version 1.0 and that is the processor. It's not an arm. It's something else Hopefully that'll be helpful to somebody, but this is what it looks like underneath very well organized and very well put together So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on and uh, we'll start with the assembly process All right So let's do a step one of the assembly and that is gonna require the four bolts these longer ones and don't forget to put the little washers in the bolts. And so we're gonna simply grab the upper portion and we're gonna set it down. Now, when you do set it down, you're gonna have to be really careful because on this printer, there are connectors right here. It looks like mine are loose, but maybe they're keeping them loose on purpose. So when you go in there, then we can plug it in. That's probably what's going on here. So in any case, when you do put this in, be careful with these connectors here. They do plug right there on the other side on the base. So just keep that in mind when you're putting this in. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this over slowly. And my connector here looks like is okay where it's at. So it is quite loose, so it doesn't even plug. So I guess we're okay. I think they leave that loose on purpose so you don't ruin that when you do try to install this. So the easiest way I found this is just tilting the printer to the side and then grabbing a bolt and starting it on the bottom. Go ahead and start too. So then we're gonna grab the provided Allen wrench and tighten them up a bit. So don't tighten this yet. Just kind of get it close until you start the other side. All right, now we go to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna tilt it. And you can see on the bottom, there's cutouts here for the bolts. And so we can go ahead and tighten this side up really snug. So you definitely wanna make this as snug as you can, but you can kind of feel when the bolt, you know, starting to get a lot of resistance, you just stop. Cause you do want this to be quite rigid. And now we're just gonna go to our other side and tighten these up. And so now our base is connected to the upper portion of the printer here. And believe it or not, guys, that's the only major part that we will need to assemble. So as you can see, this is a very easy and beginner-friendly kind of printer. 
So let's go back to this side where we have this plug that we need to plug in. And what I'm noticing is I have a few loose parts here. I think during shipping, some of these parts came apart like this motor here. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, I guess in a little bit. Can't really get to it where it is right there. But if you can see right here, this plug, hopefully you can see that's the plug that we never plugged in. We can go ahead and gently push this in until you know it kind of just stops. And there are two little bolts here that we can tighten up and the, the, this plug will be rigid and not move around like it is right now. All right, I think that's a little better. There's some more lighting. But well, you can see there's two bolts right here that we just need to tighten. And already our plug is nice and tight with just even one bolt. Go ahead and do the other one. That should be good right there. So that's nice and tight. So step two in the manual is actually installing our spool holder and that should be a pretty simple process. So our spool holder here is completely metal and so it'll go something like this on the top here. Now one of them has a little knob here and I'm guessing that's the one that maybe is for adjustability. If you guys can see here on the top maybe there's little grooves and the spool holder simply just goes in those grooves just like that. So one of these can adjust and that's the one that had this little knob that I pulled off of it. And so they make it easy where you can just tighten that and it'll stand still so you can fit different kind of spools, different sizes. And so this one doesn't really have to do anything. It just sits in there like that. So yeah, it's quite simple the way it works. So you know, you just will adjust this one to your spool width and this one is just stationary there. So it does kind of move around, but it doesn't really matter. And there are individual bearings here on each end that the spool rolls on. So it makes it very smooth. Definitely a pretty nice way of making a spool holder. Now we do have this plug here and that actually plugs to the filament detector here, which is on the front side. And so you just simply plug the plug into it and that's it. Now we have a filament detector. So I ran my wire behind the bracket here and around because I don't want this cable to be rubbing on the uh, spool as it's turning. So it should be just fine right there. All right, so for step three, we just need to connect all the connectors, the two Z motor connectors, and then the Z axis optical connector. And then there's another connector here also. All right, so here on the back of the printer, we can see that there's a motor here and a motor here, and that's what we're plugging in. And then there's a wire coming out from the base right next to it, and that's what we need to plug. So this one's done, and that one's done. So there is another plug right here, and this is actually the filament detector cord here that needs to plug into that socket. All right, just like that. Now it did come with this little piece of trim here that kind of tucks the wire away and it clips into the channel right here. So you can see it just clipped in there. So that kind of keeps it where the bed doesn't hit it. So check where that goes. Maybe you raise it up a bit. So make sure the bed is not gonna be rubbing on this wire here. All right, looks good. So for the last part, on the front right side of the printer here, we can see that there's a sensor right here. And this is what tells the Z-axis here to stop when it gets you know, close enough to here. And that plug is just right here. And we're just gonna simply plug that in. All right, quite a simple process. So this thing doesn't really go anywhere. It just sits here, just like that. All right, so we're getting really close to putting this thing together. Actually guys, we are done putting this together because on step four here, it just says to adjust the wheels on all the axes. And that's basically the last step. But before I can get to that, I wanna go ahead and cut this loose here. There's some zip ties holding the Z axes from going up and down. And it looks like my belt here is completely loose. So it looks like during shipping, my motor here, the X axis motor completely unscrewed itself and relieved tension here on the belt. So I need to raise the Z axis up a little bit so we can see what I can do here about this motor. So most likely you're not gonna have this issue. It's just my isolated issue. And there was a little bolt that I found in the box. I guess that fell out, which was part of the uh, motor here that holds it. So yeah, I'm just gonna reinstall that little bolt and it looks like everything's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna push on the motor that way to tighten up the belt. And then there's another bolt on this side. We'll go ahead and tighten also. All right, so we're back to normal here. So all that happened is this little motor here got unscrewed and kind of fell out and made the belt loose. Nothing major here, so it's back to normal. Everything is good. All right, so now we're gonna pull out our fancy little chrome wrench here. And we're also gonna need an Allen wrench. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna check the tension on these wheels here. So there's actually wheels behind these covers also, but you know, they are sealed up and there's no way we can get to them. So hopefully they adjusted those from the factory. That's kind of strange that they did that. I would rather they leave it open so we can adjust them. But uh, yeah, hopefully they got that right and it's fine there. 
And actually looking at this hot end one, it's also perfect. We don't even have to adjust this. But basically what you want, like you want these wheels to barely spin. Like if any of these wheels are loose and have no friction, that means it's too loose. And if it's really hard to spin, that means they're too tight. So, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve to this, but it's all about being as loose as possible without having any kind of play in the uh, in the whole apparatus. So. so it looks like we're fine here. Let's check the bed. And surprisingly on mine, even the bed is perfectly fine. So it looks like my machine was adjusted in the factory and it pretty much stayed that way. And so there's no wobble, but the little rollers underneath, you know, spin with just slight friction. So, and that's what you really want. So yeah, at this point guys, pretty much you are finished. If everything looks good, you know, make sure your belts are tight and running true. While all this stuff should be, you know, done right from the factory, a lot of times there will be where you have to adjust things. On mine here, it doesn't appear I have to do practically anything. All right, I think we can go ahead and take off this paper here on top of the bed. And let's go ahead to take the little screen protector from the display. And that's it. We're done with the assembly process. So everything is connected. Everything's tight. All the rollers are rolling. All the belts are aligned, are not binding or doing anything funny. So everything is good. So once you know everything is good, you can go ahead and proceed installing the plug, which is in the back of the machine, just like that. But before powering up, let's take a closer look at all the details of how the Genius here is constructed and all the pieces to it. All right, so we're gonna start up here on the top and here we have the spool holder and then we have the filament detector. So your spool will sit on here on the top and then your filament will go through that little hole there and then out and down to the hot end right here where it will be pushed through by the direct drive extruder. So this brace here on the top is completely plastic but it's you know quite a thick plastic. It's not like you know a flimsy thing, so it's quite durable. And we have this huge logo on the top. So if we go to the back, we can see that there is a belt here that runs in between of the two Z-axis leads. And what that does is it synchronizes the whole system together. You know, that way one motor or one side or the other can't be thrown off because they're coupled together between each other through this belt here on the top. So I think that's a great design and definitely gives it a peace of mind that, you know, there's not going to be any kind of fluctuations in the up and down motion. So this pull holder adjusts here with this little knob. So if you loosen it, you can spread it either wider or narrower according to your spool. And that's the slot there that the adjustability has and this one is just stationary and doesn't move so once you get that right you just tighten this little knob here and you know it stays in that position so very nice spool holder and you know these bearings obviously are a huge plus for the spool to run really smooth all right so as we go down we can see the x-axis channel here is huge but in any case it's a very large channel and that really makes it very stable the way this whole printer is designed is extremely stable so there are caps here the brackets so we can't loosen or tighten the wheels which is okay as long as they're done right from the factory and this also houses our brass bushings here for the leads to run on and they did leave a little play here on purpose so if there are any kind of fluctuations it can flex in that play a bit and so as we move down we can see our two z-axis motors on each side with flexible couplers here and so if I spin one, obviously the other one will spin because the whole system spins together, as you can see here. So all the in-stop switches are like these sensing optical kind or however that works. And so here's our Y, our Z is over here on this side, and then our X is right over here. So definitely a more modern way to do in-stop switches compared to the traditional clicky kind. So theoretically, you know, these switching should last much, much longer. So here we can see the back of the printer and the cabling that comes out of it. Very nicely organized. We got the bed wiring here and a nice cable shroud here. And looks like it's integrated into the silicone pad under there. So everything is quite flexible and there's no strain that needs to be relieved. So very well designed there. So here we have our power button, fused outlet with the power cord. And this is some more information about the printer. So the build size is 220 by 220 by 250. Very competitive size there with a lot of other printers. And it looks like the filament is PLA and TPU, which is really cool to have a printer that, you know, specializes in TPU. And the reason it does is because of its direct drive. And let's take a closer look at the hot end. And so this is our hot end assembly. It's all together with the direct drive. I have to say this is, you know, a better overall package compared to having a Bowden tube. 
So we do have this nice blue cover here and that's actually molded also. It's not 3D printed. We have a cable here that plugs then runs along the channel here into probably a junction box in here and that's when it comes back out and goes back down into the base here and this is where we plugged our plug which by the way is 3D printed is the only piece here. So back to the hot end here we have the direct extruder and it looks like the geared kind which is I think called Titan and so we do have a little nub here that we can push to relieve the tension on the pusher right here which is metal but the gears are plastic though. But in any case, below this extruder assembly here, we have the hot end assembly, which is comprised of heat block cooling and then the parts cooler fan here. On the heat block, you can see that there is a metal heat sink right there behind it. And if we go underneath, we can kind of see a little better. So this was the heat sink right here. And then the heat sink is connected to another piece behind it. That's where the filament goes through. And then as it goes down, it goes to a heating block right here, which by the way is insulated with this silicone sock. And then we have a little nozzle here at the end. So everything is really nicely tucked away and beautifully assembled here. And we can see our parts cooling fan is quite large there and has a pretty big opening for cooling. And it's not 3D printed as most are. So on the other side of that heat block we can see we have a little LED module and this is where we have a light. And so the light does shine down on the bed. So you can see better of what you're printing. All right, and so if we go down, we can see our bed here. It is a glass bed with this perforated little dots on it. So hopefully you can see the little dots there. And so what happens is when it heats up, it expands and holds the model to it very well. And then as it cools, it releases the model. And that's what makes this thing really unique and makes printing very easy because you don't really have to think about, you know, glue and this and that. It just, it holds the model and then releases when it cools. So, and very friendly overall, except for, you know, maybe a few situations where you had power loss and your bed would cool, but you're not finished printing, you know, that could be a problem because then your model just pops off on its own. But because that normally never happens, overall this ultra base bed here is a great, great option and I'm glad they have it on this printer. So if we go below the glass bed, we can see there is a silicone mat here. And that is the heating element that heats up the bed. And that does work off AC. So you're actually sending household power straight to this element here. And it is controlled, you know, on and off with a controller. And below that we have insulation. So not only do we have a great heating element, we have insulation. So this bed should literally heat up faster than the nozzle. And so below that, we can see we have a frame with four large knobs to adjust the bed. So on the front of the printer, we have a big logo here that says artillery. On the right side of it, we have some venting holes and a USB connection to the computer. On the left side of the printer, we can see we have a pretty good size touchscreen with a little reset button is what that looks like. And if we go to the top here, we can see we have a USB plug and that's to plug in the provided thumb drive here. And then we also have a micro SD card slot if you wanna use that route. And on the left side here, it's pretty clean with some venting holes. All right, and so that is the printer. So let's go ahead and power it on, level the bed, check out the UI, and then start our first print. All right, so I got the printer plugged in the wall. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. All right, so we got an artillery logo and a really nice looking UI. I definitely love how they decided to go with the black background. It looks very nice. So with the printer just running idle, it's quite quiet. I can just hear a little bit of fans and it's mostly that big fan on the bottom. So here it looks like we got the hot end temperature, the bed temperature, and the fan speed. Then we have three hot buttons, tools, set, and print. So let's go ahead and check out tools. So if we click on that, we can see we can preheat, extrude, move home, level, change filament, and more. Let's see what's more. Okay, and then we can turn on and off our light. Okay, so if I click white, our light turns on. Let's try red, and then green, and then blue and that is white so yeah there's not a huge difference between white and blue to be honest and then our black bulb here turns it off so first things first before i do anything i like to make sure that all our z axis end stop switches work so let's go ahead and click on move well they don't have a home button here oh here we go there's a dedicated home button so let's click on home and see what happens it's a moment of truth that looks like we gotta click home again all right so there it goes Okay, so it looks like the X and the Y is fine. Now we're going to see the Z. And it does move quite quick, by the way. All right, looks like it stopped perfect. 
and we can see there's a little light there indicating that it's activated and according to our nozzle it looks like we're just about right where we need to be yeah it looks like this printer was adjusted from the factory quite well before it was shipped out all right so that's great let's go back so the next thing i like to do is i like to preheat everything to make sure our bed works and then our nozzle also preheats so let's go to heat and then here we have some options we can choose between the the hot end and the bed so if we click on hot end let's click add okay so i guess it makes you do it manually interesting all right so let's go to 220 and then on the bed let's go to 60 and uh, we'll see how quick that warms up so if we go back to the home we can see our hot end and our bed is heating up and you guys can see how fast the bed is heating up it's already at 50 almost so yeah it looks like they'll get to the preheat well yeah the bed actually beat the uh, hot end and that was actually my thought from the beginning so yeah that's a great great design on the bed here i love how quick it heats up that makes it super nice all right so it looks like our nozzle heats our bed heats so before we can print anything we need to level the bed and so we're going to find that in tools and it says here level click on level and here you guys can see we have five points we have the four edges and then the fifth being the center so let's click on our first edge here and you can see it goes to our first point and i really like it how they Put it where it's not on the edge but more you know towards the center so we're going to grab a piece of paper i'm just going to use this quality control piece here that they gave us and so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this knob until we start getting a little bit of drag on the paper okay so we have a really little bit of drag that's where we want to be so let's go to the second one same thing here all right third one fourth one all right and so that's good now before you even go to the middle what you need to do is you need to go over these points again at least two more times because if i go back to my first one which was good all of a sudden it's not good anymore way too tight and the reason why is when you move one corner the other corner moves so go around in the circle at least three times and then when you're confident that they're all equal then go to the middle and check that so i actually had to go three more times around just to get it right so it takes a while so take your time because this is the most important part about any start so now we can go to the middle and check out what that look feels like and that feels like it's a little bit loose so what I like to do in this situation, if you know you need to, you know, squeeze it up just a tiny bit, is what I'll do is I'll go to every knob and I'll turn it the same amount. So I'll just turn it barely, just like that, barely. So just make sure you do it the same on every knob. And now that feels like we're much better. So it's okay if the middle is just a tiny bit looser, if that's what it is, or a tiny bit more, as long as it's all pretty close is what you want. So yeah, and so that should do it. And the bed should be nice and leveled and we should be ready to print. But before we can do that, we need to load some filament. So we're gonna do that in the extrude area. So, but before we can extrude, we need to put a roll of filament in there and then feed it down into the extruder. All right, so for the first print, I'm gonna use this dark bluey purple filament. So we're just gonna install it into our spool holder. Now I've already got it adjusted where it fits in there perfectly. And obviously you can adjust one of these to go back and forth as you need it. So then we're gonna grab our filament and we're gonna feed it through the filament detector here. Just like that. And when we go through it, you guys can see there's a little light that lights up indicating that it senses filament. And then we're just gonna go down straight into this little PTFE tubing. And then we can compress the spring on this arm and then push the filament straight down into the hot end. So now we can go here and we can extrude it in or out. And so here's the speed and how much. So we can go 10 millimeters, normal speed, and we want it to come in. And you guys can see it pushing the filament in. You can see that sprocket moving. Now eventually it should be coming out the other end here. And sure enough, here it comes. All right, so now that we purged everything, we leveled our bed, we're ready to print. So let's grab our included USB thumb drive here and plug it into the printer. And the thumb drive does have a little red light here on top, which is kind of cool. All right, so if we go back to the main menu, we can access our thumb drive through the print, but I don't think we checked out what the settings yet. Okay, so settings is what you can set with the printer and more information about it, I guess. So we have file types, looks like. Okay, so here you can choose between USB or, or micro USB. This is basically what you want it to read. 
and we got this artillery so basically this is i guess something with wi-fi maybe so i'm not sure if this printer actually has wi-fi or not but in any case it might so here we can control our fan speed and then we have about this printer and the version here we can continue a print if there is one looks like we have some kind of cube file there and then this is to release our stepper motors so yeah quite simple and very intuitive ui here so let's click on print and we can see here we have a sample print which is a cube so let's go ahead and print the cube so we're going to click on it confirm and it started and this is the screen that we get when it's printing so we have the file name on the top the percentage it's done with the hot end temperature the bed temperature and our fan and if we click options we can pause it stop it we can change our temperature on the bed and nozzle we can change our filament and also we can control our fan speed and the light on and off so our light actually comes on when it starts printing but i'm going to go ahead and turn that off because it's probably going to mess up our videoing here it should start printing shortly so i turned the light back on which i don't want the light so i'm going to go to options and turn it off okay there it goes all right so it looks like you started okay we got a blob over there probably need to pull off the blob just stayed on there. I'm just going to leave it alone. But yeah, it looks like we're getting a good start and it's printing. And by the way, guys, I don't know if you can hear, but it's very quiet. Let me bring my microphone to it so you can hear it. So you practically can't hear it. It's ultra quiet. I can actually hear the fan underneath more than the printer seems like. So that's a huge plus already. All right, so I'm just going to let it print and uh, we'll see what it produces and what kind of quality we got. All right, so our cube is done and it only took 38 minutes. Oh, all right. So as you guys saw, I just touched it and it literally popped off. I didn't expect that. Totally forgot how good this stuff works. So yeah, this is an artillery cube. I mean, it's a little bit of a rough cube. I don't think it's, you know, really high resolution here, but we can still see the walls are looking really nice. And there seems to be pretty good uniform layering. And the bottom is awesome also. And that's the thing about this ultra base. It you know, even makes the bottoms look great. And as you saw there, I just touched it and it popped right off. All right, so the cube looks pretty good. But I think we need to go ahead and slice our own prints, print a bunch of other stuff, and see what that looks like. All right, so we printed quite a few things here. And I have to say right off the bat, this printer is really enjoyable to use. It has a charm to it, I guess, of how you get to experience 3D printing. And the reason I say that is because for some reason, it just wants you to print more and more because it makes it easy for you. But with that said, let's go ahead and look at some of these prints. So we already looked at the artillery cube. The next thing I printed was this benchy here in this really chrome kind of finish filament. And as you can see here, it turned out quite nice. Maybe I can show you the reflection a little better, but you can see, you know, this being a shiny filament, you can really see how the layers are sitting. And they're actually sitting really, really good. And even you can see our walls are looking pretty good too. So just a solid print overall, and our bottoms are awesome too because of that bed. So as far as the print quality goes, I think you guys can see that, you know, it's way up there. So I wanted to print another Benchy that wasn't so shiny. So maybe we can see a little better of how the layers sit. So you guys can see on the reflection there. And if you see a little bit of, you know, like lining, that's just this coloring in the filament. It's just this type of filament. We can see the stitching right here. But yeah, it looks like a very solid print. And you can really tell that by the reflection there on the walls. So the benchies turned out really nice. So I went ahead and printed more stuff. So let's check out this calibration cube. Now this thing didn't turn out perfect. And the reason for that was because I had one of the sides here. You can kind of see it looks smashed, lifted on me. And I actually realized that, you know, even though I didn't touch the bed with my greasy hands, it still had a little bit of some kind of, you know, like oily substance to it. So what I did was I wiped it with alcohol. And after that, it was flawless every time. So if you do get this printer, make sure you clean your bed with alcohol before you start printing. But as far as the quality on the cube is concerned, you guys can see it's very good. Overall, the reflections here. You can see the layers are sitting really nice. 
and this is what our top looks like so very good and by the way all of these prints were printed in 0.16 millimeter height so not a really fine resolution but a good medium between speed and quality so so this gear thing here printed with the cube together and i haven't broke it loose yet meaning like it's still bound i can't just spin it with my hand so i'm kind of curious if i'll be able to break this thing loose but if we look at the quality it's really good on the walls here and on the print itself it looks really good too i guess i need to get an allen wrench in there and see if i can twist this whole thing and see if we can break it loose all right so i got the wrench let's see it should fit in there perfectly uh, which it does very nice and i'm wondering if it'll break loose or not so okay so it looks like it doesn't want to so unfortunately it looks like we're fused and it does look like it's on the bottom of it so maybe i was a little too close to the bed i'm gonna see if i can cut around these little teeth here where it looks like it's fused and if we can break it then so messing with it some more and more i could not break it loose so i don't know if it's just fused together but i think it's just the bottom and i'm just not cutting it enough to cut it loose but in any case i would think that this is more of a user error here on my end so let's take a look at some more models so i went ahead and printed the space guy dude from matter hackers and he turned out amazing and it might be a little bit hard to see but you can guys see by the reflection how great those layers are sitting I mean he just turned out awesome so a great print here and check out the bottom of his shoes which were by the way printed straight to the bed so there was no rafts or anything and that turned out really good so yeah super solid model and has a really nice shine to it so this model here proves that you know it's really good with outer wall surfaces and layer bonding because you can see how great the finish is so i was very happy to see how this came out so i wanted to print something more you know complicated which had lots of pieces and this little octopus thing with these linked little legs is definitely a more delicate kind of item to print and if you guys can see it turned out really well on all his feet here or legs and this was also printed straight to the bed and there was no issues whatsoever with bonding or you know peeling up or anything once i did clean the bed with the alcohol it was perfect after that so yeah great model also and it turned out excellent and so the last piece i printed is this box over here if you guys can see and i haven't took it off the bed yet it's actually still on the bed and i just wanted to show you how easy it is to remove something after it finishes printing so let's go ahead and try to take it off and that's it that's all it takes it's just a little and it's off and if you look at the bottom i mean it's literally perfect i mean that's an excellent bottom guys it doesn't get better than that for a bottom of course unless you get you know glass but but this is kind of like glass with the little dimples but yeah whatever they're using for this bed here it's working amazingly well so to recap this printer guys i would have to say this printer you know it competes with one of the well best known printers out there or i guess the most popular which is the ender 3s i have to say the ender 3 is starting to feel a lot more outdated when you have printers like this coming out you know this thing is built like a tank first of all i mean look at this large aluminum extrusions that they use here and the way it's all set up i mean we got dual lead screw for the z-axis we got an interconnecting belt on the top you know we have a direct drive extruder our wire management of the, all the cables here is very neat you know we're using optical sensors to switch axes we have this amazing bed that one is heated sticks and then one cool just pops right off as you saw in this big box it had no problems just popping off we have an ac heated bed with insulation which is an amazing feature for bed heating we have a full touch screen display with a great user interface and we also get a usb or micro sd card options for bringing files in and obviously you can also plug it with the usb cable and not to mention you know if your power goes out it will resume print and also it has the filament detector on the top where you know if your filament runs out it'll pause print and then continue when you do change it so it has all the features everything you would want in a printer so this thing has quite a lot to offer it hits the sweet spot everywhere and also not to mention that it's ultra quiet I mean, you cannot hear those motors running at all, practically. The only thing you hear is fan noise, and that's not even that loud either. So overall, guys, you can see that this thing is amazing, and I think Artillery did an excellent job with this printer, even though the name is kind of interesting. But I do have to say it is a quite a genius little printer here, so so definitely a huge thumbs up for this thing and if you're just starting to get into 3d printing this is definitely an excellent choice if you can go for this printer i mean you practically get everything you'd ever want in a printer 
here. And the assembly process was very easy as you saw. And also if you are a TPU fan and you want to print that flexible filament, this is also the printer to do it with because it does have that direct drive extruder. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. And if you want to check out more details about this printer and even get one for yourself, I'm going to have some links in the description. So check that out. And if you enjoyed watching videos like this, I got a lot more 3D printing stuff to come. So if you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button to see more. And I want to say thank you for everyone that watches to the end and your support for this channel. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.